Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Danielle Alex, creator of Diversity Kitchen, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. Today, we're making pigs in a blanket, and because I'm a vegetarian, instead, of pigs, I'm going to use carrots. Today, I've got a pigs in a blanket recipe that relies on a lot of Spanish ingredients, some chorizo, membrillo. It really adds to the flavor without adding too much work. But my pigs in a blanket are a little different. I'm using homemade puff pastry with sage folded into the dough, and we're making breakfast sausage. I find it's perfect for a brunch situation. We're gonna get the pigs ready, but instead of pigs, I'm going to use carrots. Now we've got the pigs, the piggies. In this case, chorizo, which is sort of like a Spanish sausage. So I chose breakfast sausage, country breakfast sausage. I like to sear it mm, mm, mm. because it just adds to the flavor. So you have a nice caramelized color and flavor to the sausage. So I'm gonna take these, kind of cut them down to size. I'm gonna cut them basically into little like semicircles and ultimately easier to wrap up in their little blanket homes. I'm gonna add the maple syrup. I owe people an apology. In a previous episode, I think I've besmirched the name of maple syrup. Nobody likes maple syrup. Maple syrup is good. All right, so these little piggies are now ready for their blankets. I'm gonna add some soy sauce, two cups of water, add some garlic powder, pinch of salt, and then dobo sauce. And I don't have to worry about cooking them through, obviously, because they're gonna cook through in the oven. Nice golden brown. I'm gonna put them on a new tray. Alrighty, so pigs in a blanket. I mean, they need the blanket, so let's start with the, the blanket making, or the dough. My first step to my dough is making the barrage. So whenever making puff pastry, of course you need a lot of butter and flour. And I just wanna incorporate the flour and the butter evenly. So as you can see, the first part of the barrage, everything is nice and smooth. And now I'm just gonna create a nice little square. I just wanna make sure that it's even. Then I'm just gonna wrap this, and there we are. Perfect, ready to go in the refrigerator and chill. The first step in this process is to get the blanket ready. So I'm gonna start by taking some yeast and adding it to the warm water off the bat just so it has time to bloom. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit, just let it kind of sit, gestate there, and do its thing. First, we're gonna open this. <laughs> or we're gonna use brute force. I just finished my barrage, which is the butter pat that's gonna go inside my dough. Now I'm gonna do the detrump, which is the dough part of the recipe. The mixer is my friend today, so I'm gonna put Got my, my flour, flour in the mixer, and then a little bit of salt. salt. I'm just gonna give this a couple little pulses just to mix it all together. This has been sitting for a little bit. You kind of already see there's like a weird foamy thing going on. So I'm just gonna throw this into the food processor. And then I got a little bit of butter here. Hey, this is puff pastry, right? Butter's everywhere. And now I have a touch of vinegar, which adds to the flakiness of my dough, and water, cold water. I'm just gonna add warm water slowly. Look at that, you got like this dough ball. So now we have our dough, let's do some mo. What do you do with this? Uh huh. Because my goal is to kind of knead this out by hand for like five, 10 minutes until it's nice and smooth and elastic. And right now it's just like incredibly sticky. <laughs> but you know, if you're gonna do it by hand, you might as well go whole hog. No pun intended, but now that it's there, I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Blanket looks good. I'm gonna set this in a bowl. And I always cover it with plastic because the last thing you wanna do is to have a film start to form over the dough. This sits overnight, like in a, in a refrigerator overnight, you're gonna chill it and then uh, should be good to go. And this is my dough. <laughs> so now I've let my dough rest for about an hour with my barrage, my butter pat. Dough's been sitting for like 24 hours. I actually took it out of the fridge. It's been resting for like an hour just to like kind of get up to room temp. So let's start creating our puff pastry. I'm gonna roll this out into a nice rectangle. You wanna make sure that it's as even as possible so you're making those perfect layers of butter, dough, butter, dough. It's gotta be folded. It's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be the perfect blanket for the piggies because they've, they've, they've come so far. You can't rob them of a, of a nice, sleep. God. Our dough looks pretty good. Now I can add my butter. And then I'm gonna take pretty much the ends of this here. You just wanna make sure that the dough is covering 
all of the butter so it doesn't stick and become a mess. So I'm gonna roll this out and get this ready for our first turn. Gonna do one like this and another like this. And doesn't that look beautiful? We'll go ahead and wrap this in plastic once again and I'm gonna let this chill for a few hours. First, we have this long piece of dough. We're gonna take this and stretch it out. Oh, wow. Alrighty, so now I'm taking out my puff pastry. I've already done that tri-fold where I, you know, fold the dough onto itself. I've done that three other times. And in between each process, I put it back into the refrigerator and I let it chill for at least two hours until it's firm. Now for my last and final turn, I am going to add these little sage leaves nicely onto the dough. And then fold that over. So I've kind of got two layers of sage in between my dough. Now that I have my sage in there, I'm gonna actually wrap this and let this rest. All right, so I'm gonna just roll this out till it's like maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch to like a third of an inch thick. So you'll notice here as the dough gets thinner and thinner that you can really start to see more of these leaves come through the dough. Mm. Stress eating. So this is all set up. I'm gonna cut this into strips. So I'll take a sausage, and here I can see roughly like how large, how the length of the sausage. So I'll measure, and doing this with a, a nice long knife just helps ensure a better and a cleaner cut. So when it's all said and done, you got a little strip like that. See, perfect. Now that our blanket is ready and the pigs are ready, it's time to put them together and then put them in the oven and then put them in my stomach and then put, that's all the puts I got. <laughs> First off, we've got some manchego cheese here. Now, manchego is phenomenal, right? It's like the Spanish cheese. It's got this really robust, nutty flavor. Well, I'm just gonna cut the rind off of this and then shred it, and that is going to be layered onto the dough. Next is this guy, membrillo. This is like really, really sweet. It's quince paste from like the quince fruit, so. <laughs> Gonna just thinly slice this, and this is also gonna line the blanket. So when we tuck everything in, it tastes great. And let's get and ready with our an egg wash. An egg wash is simple. It's just cracked egg with a touch of water. Give us a light whisk. Let's put these piggies to bed. So I'm literally just gonna start adding our pig, AKA my carrot, and roll it up so that it's nice and safe. So the membrillo. Right here, this is like a pillow. I'm gonna go with the head of the bed. A Little bit of manchego cheese. This is like the, the fitted sheet. You know, like the fitted sheet that you put on. <laughs> I hate myself. Alrighty, so first one in. I'm gonna take it like this, and then I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna cut it to about there. Do not close your eyes and cut things. I'm gonna add a touch of egg, egg wash, wash just to seal it shut. And this kind of just helps with the binding. Like helps everything stick together. And then the piggy. It's right at the head of the bed. I'm gonna wrap it in. Then I'll go ahead and put it with the fold down on my baking sheet. You cannot have this for date night. That would be your first and last date if this was on date night. He made you what? Uh-uh, tell him you didn't see him again. If you really want to punch more flavor into this, you can actually add some pimenton along the top. It's like smoked paprika, so like boost the flavor a little bit and add to the smokiness of the chorizo. If I had to pair a wine with this, it would be a very strong wine. <laughs> I'm actually out of embryo, which works perfectly because I think me trying to eat any more of these would just be piggish, so. There it is again. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the last thing um, that these little piggies in a blanket need is like a, it's like a bedtime story. So our, all of our pigs are wrapped in a blanket. You can see the sage in the puff pastry. And now I'm gonna brush all of them with the egg wash over the top to give it like this nice golden brown uh, crust. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more of the manchego cheese on there just for, you know, just for a little pizzazz, hit them with the old razzle dazzle. And sprinkle them with sesame seeds. And then top with a little more pimenton just to give it like a smoky little punch. And they'll be good, they'll be good. You can put them to rest. Alrighty, so I think those look pretty fun. So let's go ahead and chill these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whisper this next part. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator for like, 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna pop them in an oven at 375 degrees. degrees. At 400 degrees. For about 20, 25 minutes. For like 23 to 27 minutes. For 10 to 15 minutes. All right, Shh. let's do this. While our pigs in the blanket are in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of the sausage out of the casing and then kind of chop it up too. First things first, 
I'm gonna start with balsamic vinegar, my water, I'm gonna put all the liquids in first, and cocoa aminos. Now, already, cocoa aminos and balsamic sort of have like the sweet, tangy, salty flavor profile to them. So I have some pitted uh, dates that I'm just gonna rip in half and throw these in there. These are kind of tough. So the whole point of adding them into the pot and sort of heating everything up is just to soften them a little bit so there's no chunks when I go to blend it. Next up, tomato paste. A little right, bit of Dijon, Dijon mustard. mustard. Scrape it into the bowl. Give it a little bit of zest. Ooh. Mm. And then there's some spices to finish everything off. So we got garlic powder, onion powder, some salt, then a little bit of pepper. But the goal is not to cook Really, the goal is just to let everything stew together and soften. Alrighty, so now we're gonna do the real sauce. So I'm gonna start off by making a roux, butter and flour. I just wanna melt it quickly, add our flour. For my liquid, I'm gonna add some chicken stock. I usually make some at home and just keep some in the freezer. And the whole milk. And I'm gonna continue to bring this up and stir it until it starts to thicken. Then we're gonna add our maple syrup. This is an homage to maple syrup. I'm really sorry about what I said previously. I'm not that man anymore. Some garlic powder, and then we're gonna add some water just to cut it, and then we're gonna mix it up. I think this is a good consistency. Making this sauce is literally just as simple as transferring this into the blender. All that's left to do is blend this. At this point, now that you have nice little bubbles there, I'm gonna go ahead and add the sausage back in. Also gonna add some fresh cracked black pepper in it, salt. Now I'm gonna finish it with my Dijon and my whole grain mustard. So that's where you kind of go from country gravy to, I guess, something a little more French. <laughs> Time to do the taste test. Ooh, ooh, ah. And this is my sauce. The sauce is done. Ooh, it's got a kick to it. That octave was better in my head. So, now that they're baked, fresh out the oven, golden brown. They look gorgeous, if I do say so myself. But I think all that's left is to plate these and then just shove them one by one into my face hole. Wonderful, so we made it. We're uh, going to plate. So I'm just gonna put so my sauce put in, in the middle. middle. And then I'll put a few around. And you see the egg wash gave it nice color. A little sesame seeds on top, jazz it up. And these are my carrot filled pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket with a little bit of Spanish flair. And here are my pigs in a blanket. And now it's time for the taste test. Oh, it smells so good. All right, cheers. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. That is good. I had my doubts. Mm. So good. That's a win. 100% win, this is so good. I retract my previous statement. If you serve this on a first date, there will be many more in your future. Pigs in a Blanket is a quintessential dish from the United States that can be a versatile snack or dinner. There are so many options. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Steven used a carrot as his pig, which is a nice plant forward substitution. These carrots have already been peeled. Baby carrots are extruded from large carrots with special machinery. They're usually wet in bags when you buy them to protect them from losing beta carotene, which give them their orange color. Beta carotene reacts more with air than with water, so the water protects the color and keeps them fresh. It looks like meat though, from a distance. If you squint, turn your head to the side and use your imagination. Daniel used chorizo, a pork-based cured sausage that is seasoned with paprika and peppers that give it its red color. I think if you want to ramp up your pigs in a blanket game, using something like this that's heavily seasoned and has a great flavor profile already is a great way to go. It's slightly spicy too. Easy, perfect. Mwah. Danielle also used breakfast fresh sausage links. Fresh sausage is made from ground or chopped meat with no meat byproducts like the heart, kidney, or liver of the animal. It contains water, but not more than 3% of the total ingredients and must be less than 50% fat by weight. But the flavor is so good. Steven used canned crescent dough. This dough relies on chemical leaveners like gluconodelta lactone that remain inactive while in the package but become acidic when heated. This acidity interacts with the baking soda in the dough and creates pockets of carbon dioxide and causes the dough to rise. Steven's dough is a convenience product that's standardized so that it tastes the same each time, so it's on the bland side. No, 
That is a myth. It's also one dimensional when it comes to texture. It's simply soft from the outside to the inside. Oh, Lordy Lord. Daniel made a basic yeast dough raised with active dry yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which has been dried and made porous so that it rehydrated easily. It needs to be proofed for a few minutes. You'll see it bubbling and fizzing so you know the yeast is active. He proofed his dough overnight, which allowed the yeast to produce carbon dioxide, which leavened the dough when it was baked and allowed for some flavor compounds to form as the result of proteolysis. Daniel has more flavor development than Steven because he fermented his dough. While the yeast is standardized, the process includes the addition of natural lactic acid bacteria that add more complexity to his dough. It will also crisp very nicely once it's baked. Which is my favorite part. Danielle made the most extravagant blanket for her pigs, puff pastry. She made a barrage where she mixes a small amount of flour and lots of softened butter together and then chilled it. Next, Danielle made a dough called the dough trump. It's a moderately firm dough and acts as a base for starting to fold her layers. Danielle also added some vinegar, which is acidic. So there are a lot of questions whether vinegar acid really makes a dough flaky or not. The acid allows a small amount of gluten developed to become more flexible and stretchable, which is important when she starts rolling, folding, and turning her dough. There's lots of butter in puff pastry. Butter has enough water in it to turn to steam, which lifts the sheets of flour mixture when the puff is baked at a high temperature, like 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The butter also coats the flour mixture, preventing hydration, so you end up with minimal gluten development and a tender flaky crust. Butter makes everything better. She did four turns total, which makes many layers of cold dough and cold butter, making this ultra flaky once it's baked. Honestly, I say homemade puff pastry is always worth the effort. Steven helped enhance his baby carrots by seasoning them with sweet and salty ingredients. His sauce was simple and tasty because the sweet maple syrup balanced the spicy and salty Dijon mustard. Compliments to the chef. Oh, that's me. Compliments to me. Daniel used coconut aminos in his sauce. Aminos is short for amino acids, which are the building blocks of all proteins. Coconut aminos are derived from fermented sap from a coconut palm tree. They add a savory quality to Daniel's dipping sauce. Nice. Danielle carried the pork theme straight through to her sausage-based sauce. She added flour to butter to make a roux, then added chicken stock and milk, which were thickened as the starch in the flour gelatinized. Gelatinization occurs when molecular bonds in moistened flour are heated. They vibrate and break, allowing water to enter the starch granule, disrupt the structure, and become thick. She added the sausage and a dash of Dijon mustard, and voila! Level three pigs in a blanket with decadent sausage sauce. Why not? If it works, don't, don't stop. There are so many ways to make pigs in a blanket and you don't even have to use pork. Next time you're making this rolled treat, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three impressive chefs.